Having great sounding audio doesn't just depend on what microphone you have, but it also has to do with what software you're using and what kind of effects and filters you're applying to it. And in fact, most microphones have some sort of EQ filters and things like that applied to it. So I'm gonna teach you about the three most common used filters inside of OBS to help clean up your audio and make it sound that much better. It's where you can hear the AC in the background to sounding like this. Much better that way. Let me go and show you how to do that. So in this, we're gonna go over what are filters, what the filters do, and then also I'm gonna give you a bonus tip at the end of this as to how to perfectly balance your audio for streaming and recording. But first things first, what are filters? Filters are basically effects that are applied to either a video source or an audio source that help change it in a way, whether it's the shape, the color, or for audio, it could be the sound and cleaning up that noise, could be increasing it, could be making a compressor do its job so that way if you get really loud, you don't hurt everyone's ears, and so much more. I'm gonna go through three basic audio filters. I feel like most streamers are actually using these days, including myself. Number one is gonna be noise suppression, which is gonna help you cut out some background noise that you don't want getting into your microphone. Then there's gonna be the noise gate, which actually helps you turn your microphone off so it's completely silent whenever you're not speaking. And then we're gonna do a compressor, which basically helps you take your really loud noises and bring them all the way down to make sure that you're not clipping or you're not screaming and making everyone's ears bleed. And then I'm also gonna give you one more bonus tip at the end, how to perfectly balance out all of your audio signals. So once we have OBS open, let's go ahead and go to our audio mixer. If you don't see this, then go ahead and go to the docs up here and then go to audio mixer. Also cool little tip because my friend actually asked me on stream why my audio bars are uh, horizontal. There's actually just a little click right here where you can make it vertical or horizontal. I personally like horizontal. Weird little thing, but there's another bonus tip to the bonus tip at the end. So keep watching because that wasn't the true bonus tip, but it's a bonus tip. So first you're gonna find where your mic source is, which is right here for me. We're gonna click on it and then we're gonna go to filters. Now I already have these filters made up, but I'm gonna go through on how to add them yourself. As you can notice on the left-hand side, they are actually not even on, so they're not doing their job just yet. So let's go ahead and first add that noise suppression. Click this bottom left-hand plus button right here, and then we're gonna go to noise suppression, call it noise suppression two, and here we are. So right now, even with the noise suppression on, you should not be able to hear my AC in the background. So if you noticed before, without this, my actual decibel levels were still bouncing between like negative 55 and negative 60. But if you look at it, once I apply the filter, which give it a sec. Now we'll apply the filter. Now it's off. No noisy AC in the background. No feeling bad about running your AC if you are streaming and you don't have to worry about choosing between hot or cold. So over here on methods, we have two different ways. We have speaks, S-P-E-X, and we have RN noise. So do notice that with RN noise, it is gonna be the better quality noise suppressor. However, it is gonna use more CPU if you do it that way. If you feel like your computer is a bit older or it's not as strong, go ahead and drop it down to the low CPU usage or even just do a test and see if the lower one works better for you because if it still works, then maybe you don't need to go ahead and use the higher one. I'm just gonna leave it on this since I'm using a gaming PC and a stream PC setup, so I should have enough resources to be able to run the better one of the two. So basically what noise suppression is that it uses part of the actual CPU to notice what is background noise, like fans, uh, computer fans, ACs, that kind of stuff, and what is not. And we'll go ahead and try and suppress that based on the wavelength that it's on while keeping your voice prominent and in front of everything else. Next thing we're gonna add is gonna be the gate. So again, go to this bottom left-hand corner, go to this plus button, and go to noise gate. Call it noise gate two. So what a noise gate is, is basically it says that if a sound is not louder than negative 32 decibels, it will not activate the microphone, which means it will be completely dead silent if I'm not speaking or if there's not a noise that is above negative 32 decibels that is activating that microphone. Now at the open threshold, basically this is saying that if the noise is, an abo is above negative 26 decibels, that it will actually go ahead and keep that gate open to make sure that it is allowing whatever it needs to get through. So a lot of times your voice, or maybe it's like sound from a keyboard if you're doing a sound test, it'll go ahead and allow those sounds to pass through the gate without it actually cutting it off. So with the attack, it's basically gonna be how fast the gate actually opens. So that means if the beginning of your words are getting cut off, then you need to lower that. The hold is gonna be basically how long it will actually hold open the gate when you're talking. So that way, if you pause in between sentences like this, it's not gonna just go ahead and just close it right immediately, or it's not gonna like, you know, cut off the beginning of your words. And then the release time is gonna basically just be how long it's gonna take for it to basically release. So if the end of your sentences are being cut off, then you wanna go ahead and adjust the release time. Now it also might have to do with the thresholds, so again, what you want to do is right down here with this mixer, you're going to want to notice exactly like where your noise is at. So let's say if we took off noise suppression. So we notice that the AC is bouncing maybe up to like 50, right? So if we really wanted to, we could probably move this down. But then what happens if like I bump my desk? So as I'm typing on my desk, you notice it actually jumps up to 40 and higher than that. 
So let's go ahead and we'll bump this up to, we'll say 35. And you don't hear me tapping on my desk. So you're going to want to go ahead and play with this and see exactly where it is. Again, using this bar down below is going to be fantastic to figure out where everything is landing and things of that nature and when it's going to supposed to open when it shouldn't open. Now, again, everyone's voice is different. All the sounds in the room is going to be different. If you're in an open space, you have more background noise, you might need to change this. So go ahead and fiddle around with this until you get it correct. I usually recommend recording a couple times, listening to yourself, maybe even just going in and whispering a little bit and just seeing if it picks that up properly, or maybe even getting really loud and just seeing what it sounds like and make sure that it's not cutting off any of your words or sentences. Go ahead and figure out which one works best for you. All right, and then in the bottom left-hand corner, we're going to go ahead and add our final filter which is going to be the compressor. Now, for anyone that plays horror games, this is gonna be really awesome because what a compressor does, it's gonna take the loudest point of the waveform and the quietest point of the waveform, and it's gonna go ahead and push it down. So that way, if you're whispering, it's gonna go ahead and bring that volume up. And then if you're gonna go ahead and you start screaming or yelling, instead of having clipping in the background and your friends getting mad at you because it sounds too loud on stream, it's gonna go ahead and bring the highest points down. So it's a more even waveform or even loudness whenever people are listening to your stream or when you're recording. All right, so most people use, I feel like either a four to one ratio or a two to one ratio. This is just gonna be basically how much compression it's applying to the actual audio signal whenever it's working. This threshold is gonna be whenever it hits negative 18 decibels, this is gonna go ahead and kick in. And then same thing, so attack very similar, how fast it is to apply this signal, and then release is gonna be how quick it is to let it go. Now output gain is gonna basically be how much gain it adds to the end of it because sometimes you can lose some loudness by using a compressor you just counterbalance that with basically using output gain to just increase the levels of your output i was using three before and it sounded pretty good so now what we're going to do is and i'm sorry for this so your ear warning turn down the speakers a little bit because i'm going to scream and it's going to be loud but if i get really loud like this then I'm clipping. You even notice visually that it's in the red as well too, and it was extremely loud. So sorry for the editor or anyone else that didn't turn your earphones down, your headphones down in time or speakers. Um, now let's go ahead and add the compressor, see what it does now. Now if I scream really loud like this, you notice it is peeking up into the red a little bit, but it's not actually clipping to the point where it's just going a full bar of red. And now if I get really, really quiet, it's gonna go ahead and keep that up kind of loud. Go and remove it. Now, if I'm whispering like this, it's the same sound, but it's about like almost anywhere from five to seven decibels wider. The compressor is really awesome because again, it kind of evens out all that sound and it kind of squishes it all together. Just keep in mind, the reason why you want the noise gate is because, or the noise suppression above, is that it's gonna clean up that signal so that way you're not compressing that ugly sound from the AC and making it louder. That's exactly what you would do. And that's why the actual order of these makes a difference because it's passing that signal along the next filter and that's what you're working with. I don't know why I just thought that song like, show me what you're working with. But anyways, so that is basically the three filters we're gonna talk about. Now for the bonus tip. This is something I feel like not a lot of streamers know about or creators know about, but I think it is very crucial and imperative to use. When you're trying to balance your audio, you actually wanna use this little green bar, which is kind of funny because we've been using this the entire time and people just don't know. So let's say if we have some music playing, So now if you notice, it's actually hitting around like negative 45 or negative 40, right? And now even if I turn it up a little bit, now you can still see again, that it's falling much lower than my actual voice. So the whole point is that you wanna make sure that you use this green bar, this bar down here to make sure that your voice is always the loudest thing because you are the streamer and that is the most important thing is that you want your voice to be the loudest. So whether it's music, gameplay, friends in Discord, anything like that, you wanna make sure that your voice is always the loudest at all times. Otherwise, it's gonna be an unhealthy balance to where people can't really hear you that well because there's too much gameplay or there's too much music. So general rule of thumb, always have your mic volume the highest audio source, period. Now, the reason why it's all in one for me is because I'm using a software mixer, so that way it's actually combining the signal all in one. But a lot of times you'll have it to where this is making noise or this is making noise, and then basically you can kind of use it like that. But again, just look at where it falls on the actual mixer, and then you wanna go from there. And that's it. Those are the three most common types of filters that we see. If you guys want more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Give us a like if you like this video and helped you out. And until next time, I'm Bipala, and I'll see you in the next one.